Right, so this is my gear loadout. Uh, this ain't just what I take camping. This is pretty much everything that I use on a regular basis. So we'll start with some of the, the normal camping things. I use a Oak Trex Rome 200 sleeping bag. Oh, I've just knocked something over. That's uh, two seasons sleeping bag, comfort of six, limit of one, but extreme of minus 14. I'm quite a hot sleeper, so I am quite happy using that. Um, I mean, I don't tend to go out too much during the winter, because I tend to do a lot of fishing during the winter, and a lot of camping during the summer. So for still staying on camping, this is my bag. It's an Oatrex bag, it's a 50 plus 10. The uh, 10 bit is this, these straps on the top. So these straps go there and you stuff stuff in, pull it down tight. And then I use a, uh, knocking stuff on the floor everywhere. Check it out there. I use a Oak Trex bag again for a day hike. If I go there high. It's only a 21 liter, uh, sorry, 28 liter. Um, yeah, it's lovely. It's got the arrow back on it, whereas the other one hasn't. The other one's just padded. So that is my bags and sleeping bags. Uh, move on to clothes next. So camping, I take these clothes in here. Um, it's just some socks and some um, base layers. Just for if it gets a bit cold at night, I can put that on. Got dry, dry socks put on. Uh, I also take a like a scarf. Can also use as a head banner, head, yeah, head banner, or whatever else you want to use it for. Gloves, hat, take out no matter what time of year I go out. Even if I do go out during the winter, always take out of me. If it's summer, I'll just stick it in the bag with the clothes, um, so I can put it on when I get and set up camp or in the morning. Um, as well, I shove in the top of my bag is a Downs jacket. It's a, just a synthetic down, Oak Treks again, really good value for money, it's only about £70 and walking, it's too, just this on, for walking it's too much. Um, so generally I just scrunch this up in the top of my bag, it's waterproof as well so if it's raining I can quickly whip this out and put it on, um, but like I said if I'm, if I'm going out and I know it's going to be torrential rain I won't actually wear this jacket, I'll wear a different one which I also wear for fishing. Um, this is not very nice to walk in but it's waterproof and it does, it is really warm. So it, it is uh, ideal just to take with you, to stick on when you stop. Right, so staying with the camping stuff. Uh, in here I have my sleeping bag liner, it's just an Ultrax one, which I bought when I bought the uh, sleeping bag. Uh, I got a, it's an Alp kit um, sleep mat. I can't remember which one it is, they're about £40, uh, quite lightweight, quite uh, not hard to bump up. Pillow as well, £3 from the range I think it was or somewhere like that. Uh, it's not a very nice material to um, actually rest your head on. I tend to just uh, wrap this over the pillow because the pillow is not much wider than this. Uh, so tents, I have two tents. Uh, up first, I have the Wild Country Me one, Z Loft or something. Z begins with a Z. I can't remember what it is. I'll put it down the link down um, the list of things I use in the description. Uh, brilliant tent, one man tent, really big, lovely all year round. No matter what what time of year I go, I, I can always rely on this. Poles for it. I don't keep the poles in the bag. I always keep them separate, and it's easier to compact down and everything else. Tent pegs, got 17, no 19 tent pegs in here. Um, Cause I used, I just literally grabbed these and it's probably a bit overkill for my other tent. Cause you'll need like 11, I think for the other tent. But it's, it's I'll just keep them all in one bag. Cause I bought, um, bought some pegs and I didn't have enough of the wild country one. Bought these pegs. I didn't really have enough for the Wild Countryman, so I ended up using the pegs that come with it. 
and then one new tank come with another set of new pegs so which are similar so that's tent pegs no matter what tent they go with me and then my new tent which i only got this week so i have to say a massive thank you to mark who gifted this to me it's a friend of mine who i go camping with this is the Landshad one uh ultralight tent it's a polis tent um literally that is all you take with your pegs um and then you use your tracking pole to put it up uh i will do another video on this at some point showing you how to put it up and the floors and everything else of it that i can see i've already tried to put it up but the video came out rubbish and unfortunately it's got dark and now it's raining so i can't do that now right so i've got a 40 liter uh, dry bag which is what my sleeping bag goes into i just stuff it right down in similar to what i do to my tents stuff them right down get them as small as possible and roll it up quickly and snap it shut nearly everything i have is in dry bags um purely because a lot of it i don't want to get wet and i have to dry it out when i get home and i see people using um uh, bag liners and then putting everything in one bag which is great but personally i think i can go in all the bags are different color. I know what bag I want. I can grab out one bag and pull it out. Whereas if you use those liners, you could be fumbling around trying to find something. And they're not exactly dark colors. They're all quite bright colors as well. So you can use them for signaling a plane or whatever, if you're neat stranded or whatever. Um, so talking dry bags, I've got another one here, a 15 liter one, which I put mobile phone, any uh, GPS, anything that I want to stick in the top of my bag. I'll just put now. I'm going to get a small one because it's too big, really. Right, so the next thing we do is, well, food. Bag here, carry food in. Um, there's still a few bits in there. And then I've got a nice um, reflective pouch that I made. There is actually a meal in here at the moment. It's just a Adventure Foods chicken curry, freeze dry. It's for my next trip. Um, I got a chocolate pudding as well, which I'm going to take, but I don't normally buy them, so because I bought a job lot and I had it there. Um, they generally just slide down into the back of my bag, I've got a pouch in the back where I slide that down to, because they're not going to get wet, they're in sealed packets. Um, so, uh, so uh, here we got... Um, my first aid kit and slash survival kit because there's a knife in there, scissors, uh, matches, windproof matches, not sure if they're waterproof ones, uh, and a lighter mirror. You can use that for if you get something in your eye, signaling someone or whatever. So it's a sort of a first aid survival kit. And then I have got some petroleum jelly. Now I did actually have someone say to me, um, you should use Vaseline. I put it on my feet. It helps stop blisters and rubbing and things like that. Um, but this stuff here is half the price. This is you find it in the baby aisle, and it's exactly the same stuff. Exactly the same stuff. Nothing different about it because Vaseline is like ninety nine point nine percent petroleum jelly, and this is what this is. This is the same thing. Um, so navigation, I carry GPS. Uh, map and compass. Uh, I used to always use this. I never used to use a map. I used to turn. I still do turn it on, but I just leave it in my bag now. Whereas before, I had it in my pocket. I could just check where I was going on it. But now I'm going back to original map and compass. So cook kit infiltration. Got a soy and mini squeeze. Fill this up from stream puddle. Screw it on into a bottle. I carry two just like coke bottles didn't find it couldn't really find anything that's lighter than that that's cheap and they're free all but so my cook kit i did have a long titanium spoon but i have lost it i don't know where it's gone so i've just got a steel one here it's just a dessert spoon and then i've now bought what i originally thought was long because they said it was long in the description spoon and fork because a fork can be handy sometimes but they're in fact normal size which i wasn't too happy about when i got it so 
So we got the Outkit 900 pot that I cook in. Inside, I've got a Outkit 400 pot, I believe it is. Um, mug that I use. And then my cook system, it's a Stormwind Cove. I ain't gonna pull it out and do it now because there is another video where I've set it all up. So that sits in there, then that sits inside there. But in the pot, I have a piece of cloth, the actual mess stove itself, and then a piece of cloth. Sorry, that's actually a piece of sponge. I'm gonna change this cloth to a dish cloth though because that one tends to burn if you use it to grab the handles, which I tend to. And it's more in there to stop the um, stove itself rattling. Someone did tell me I shouldn't keep my stove, mess stove inside my cook kit. Because uh, of the fumes it gives off and things. But I've never had a problem, never been ill from it. So, and I always give it a quick rinse out before I use it anyway. So that's cook kit. And then for fuel for the mess stove, I'll take this. Little overkill, it's good for a few, few days, it's ideal, but it's probably overkill for how efficient the stove is. Um, I did have a smaller bottle, like half a size bottle, but I don't know where it's gone, I've lost it. So that's cook kit. And then if I go out for a day hike, I just take a little gas stove, little can. Lasts me about three or four trips, the can. Um, really light, compact, all fits in there. But I do put the canister in a bag because uh, it, the rust ring on the bottom of the pot house. I don't really want that. Then I've just got a buck knife, really cheap, about 30 pound I think I paid for it. Folding shovel, just again, just a cheap one. So it's only stainless steel. Um, I'll let you guess what that's for. Uh, some people, I've seen others that are cheaper, but uh, I'm quite happy with that at the moment. And then sometimes I take my um, fire steel, uh, not all the time. If I go out for bushcraft, I'll take it, but sometimes I'll take it, sometimes I don't. It all depends where I'm, what, where, sorry, what time of year I'm going, if it's raining, damp, um, really windy, it's ideal because no matter what condition you're in, it will strike a fire, or in my case, my stove. And then just some hand sanitizer. And then my electronics bag and camera back box. Camera box, I need to get a little two litre dry bag for, I haven't got one yet. They don't fit in here with all my stuff, unfortunately. So in my electronics bag, in my miscellaneous bag, I have an array of things. So first of all, some silica gel. You get these when you buy electronics goods or even shoes some, and other things. Um, I'll put them in the bag just because it's electronics, keeps the moisture out. Because if you use your headlight and it's hot and you put it in there, it's going to condensate. So I use them to take the moisture out. Ziploc bag, always handy. Uh, a lighter to light the stove. Uh, I do normally carry a lighter anyway because I am a smoker, but it's always handy to have a spare one. Spare battery for my Garmin. Toilet paper or snot roll, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to use it for. Uh, the plate for my tracking pole. This, I use my tracking pole. Oh, I ain't going to put that on somebody. But put that on there and it stops the pole sinking too far into the ground if it's muddy. Especially if it's really wet mud. Because um, I use my pole to hold the door up to make like sort of a canopy. And the pole needs to go with the polarless tent. So if I'm somewhere where it's a bit soggy, then it stops it from sinking into the ground. Head torch, all not that's for. A pair of earphones, so I can watch a film, listen to music on my phone when I get back to camp. And my power bank. Now for the size of it, this is an amazing power bank. I've charged my GoPro on it, my phone on it a couple of times. Um, I do carry spare batteries for the GoPro, but they don't always last. Um, I do normally carry a lead in here, a short lead. Is it short? No, it's quite long lead. It's got three different heads on it, so I can charge an iPhone, the new R5, uh, is it? Uh, the tiny little slot. My phone, Android, and also it will charge um, batch packs if I'm going to go and do a coast-to-coast -coast walk next year, hopefully. So I'll be stopping off to, char to obviously charge up 
uh, batteries and things and I will stay one or two nights in a B and B so I can get cleaned up and charge everything. So that charge my phone and battery pack and my headlamp. So the headlamp is rechargeable, but I might if when I go on a uh, ten when I do the coast to coast, it's going to be about ten days. There's a uh, batteries in there. You take the battery out and charge it. So you can't charge it while you're using them, unfortunately. But there is a plastic cage you can get which sits in there and takes triple A's. So I might end up putting that in here if, when I do a longer uh, trek. So that's that bag. And then my GoPro. This is the basics. I do take other mounts. But this is literally the basics. Waterproof case, I've not got it in that at the moment. I've got it in the uh, skeleton case. And then my tri Gorilla Pod. I'm finding the top bit here is really weak. I've had to glue that one to that one because it broke off. But this one's really weak. If I have it leaning down, the camera will actually fall down. So I need to uh, invest in a better one. It's only a cheap one off eBay. And then I have an, and the thing, spare battery, cloth, and I normally have spare screws in there. But I don't know why I haven't got them in there. And the lens cover, which goes over the camera when it's not in its case. So I don't want to scratch it while I'm charging it or whatever. And obviously the GoPro itself does go in there unless I'm doing a lot of filming. Um, I have got a body mount, head mount, which I will use in the future. But I also want to get them the clamp to go around my pole. Because unfortunately I used the clamp um, when I went out um, spear fishing, And it's all gone rusted and now it won't come apart, unfortunately. So that's basically all my gear that I use. Majority of I take camping, obviously I only take one camp, one tent camping. Um, but yeah, the majority of the rest of it I do tend to take camping with me. And then obviously day hikes I'll take not all of it. Um, I've got a just a small army rucksack here as well, which I plan to use um, for when I do bushcraft. And in here I have knife and I'll have some food, water. Sorry, that's not a knife, that's a saw, just a cheap saw. Um, I'm going to get a decent one at some point. I've got my, my axe, which ain't in here because I've been using it this week, so that's in the shed. Um, obviously, knife, fire steel, and GPS map, and yeah, other things. I ain't going to go through it all now. But that is basically all my gear that I take camping with me, or for a day, day hike. Um, I don't think there's anything else missing. I'll go through... I know was, someone's going to ask. I'll go through my uh, first aid kit another time. And then same with the tent, the, the land shed tent. I'll go through that another time as well. Hopefully tomorrow, this week at some point, when the weather lets out and I can get out into the garden and do it. Or if I get a chance, I might even take it up onto the moor and set it up in its environment that's going to be used in in the most. So and see how it, so it fares up. At last it's not raining because I've, they're not, I'm not entirely sure how waterproof they are. They say they're quite waterproof, but other videos I've seen say they do leak. So I need to, um, yeah, set it up in the dry to start with and then maybe fab seal it or something. Um, any other questions? Pop down in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe video or dislike it if you didn't like it. Uh, any tips or anything on filming a better better quality because I'm having a bit of trouble with the quality of my sound at the moment. Um, that's just purely down because I'm trying to use the sound off of the GoPro, which I'm swapping out now. I'm going to use a, a separate device for recording the sound and then syncing together. Uh, the quality of the video, though, unfortunately, is a high quality from the camera itself. But my laptop, just up here, um, isn't fantastic laptop so i'm actually building a pacific lap, uh, pc just to video vi um, edit my videos uh, i've been wanting to do it for a few years but never actually got around to doing it i've done them before and for mates and things but never actually built a purpose built one for myself so i'm doing that this year i've already started but it's going to take a while because it's just so expensive to do uh i think that's about it really but yeah, if you've got any tips, 
chuck them down in the comments. If you've got any questions, chuck them down in the comments. I'll always get back to you as quick as I can, unless I get absolutely inundated, which probably won't. So cheers, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.